for writing this video, uh, sitting in McDonald's, but I'm just going to talk about the Sabbath. It's just been on my mind. A pastor from Africa was basically arguing with me. I mean, I sent a couple of videos out, as you do, you know, um, to expose the roots of Christmas and that Christ never came to fulfill Christmas. Uh, Christ is not in the Mass. This was the basic uh, teaching of the reformists. Um, when, when, when you look back, all these people that today's preachers uh, talk about, Charles Spurgeon and all of those, um, never celebrated Christmas when they actually studied the Word of God. Um, they stopped it. So all these reformers... Um, movements that happened from that, the SDAs, the Jehovah Witnesses, but they changed the gospel, you know. Um, so it confuses people. People think that if you don't uh, celebrate these traditional festivals, then, you know, you're one of these uh, pseudo-Christian religions, but it's, it's not true. we really got to get our mind focused that um, what it says in Romans 11 is that the, the Jews are power-blinded, they still have an understanding of the Torah, but they don't understand fully that the Messiah is the one who fulfills it. Um, and the very scriptures that these people, you know, these anti-Sabbath people or these anti-Yeshua people quote are the very scriptures that prove what Yeshua did. And, and they try to quote these scriptures to disprove what he did, for example, Colossians 2.16, John 7, um, John 14, etc., etc. It just goes on and on. Um, and these people, all of them are wise in their own eyes. All of them won't have a reasonable, um, you can say, discussion with anyone. They actually think they're right in their own eyes. The Bible doesn't support their doctrine, like the flat earthers. But they just go ahead and uh, push ahead with it. Really, really sad for them, anyhow. Um, Jesus Christ fulfilled all the, the, the Torah uh, festivals and feast days, but he didn't say to stop doing them because because they're a blessing. They're made, you know, the Sabbath was created for man and not man for the Sabbath. So. Can people just take Jesus' words as they are and just believe in him and believe um, that these festivals represent him and just rejoice and just thank God for what Jesus did on the cross on these festivals rather than change them, rather than say things like, I can celebrate Jesus' birthday every day. I don't think you can. I don't think it's in the Bible to do that. You know, you can celebrate what Jesus did on the cross every day but his birthday is a specific day to fulfill Torah, just as his death and resurrection was, just as his second coming will be. You know, John, you know, pastor quoted John 7, when Jesus said, my time hasn't yet come to fulfill the Feast of Tabernacles. So he used this in order to say, well, you can, you can do it every day you want, you know. It, just, just, it doesn't even make any sense, to be honest with you. Uh, I believe that Yeshua will fully fulfill that festival at his second coming. And that's when the rapture and that's when the resurrection will happen. Um, these festivals point to you know, a future fulfillment in the Messiah that all the church is looking forward to. But most of them won't admit that God will do things through his Messiah on the holy days of Israel. You know, uh, and... and, and you can call them what you want. They're actually God's holy days. Holy days of Israel. Some people call them Jewish feasts. All these three things are right, but you got to realize that if you're born again, you're an engrafted branch into the olive tree. The, uh, the church is engrafted into the olive tree, which is, which is Israel. The church is engrafted in. Now, Israel isn't engrafted into the church. That 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 is what's called a... Well, let me think what that is, reverse psychology or something. It's a false doctrine, but it's not what the Bible teaches. Um, so again, 
people that have helped again, people that have uh, helped spiritually and many other ways. And then they turn around and say, well, you know, you stayed at my place once or twice, so you, you owe me something. It's the wrong spirit. It's a wrong spirit. You know, the apostle Peter, when when he was confronted by men like that, says, you know, you, you know, you're under the guile of bitterness and both of it. Both of you shall perish in, unless you repent, unless you repent of that wickedness. Um, an evil way of thinking. Oh, I can celebrate Chris, uh, Christ's birthday every day, Christ, Christmas every day. Is it, uh, does that ring any bells? I wish it could be Christmas every day. Well, maybe in some people's minds uh, that helps promote Jesus Christ, but it's actually helping promote the Antichrist. It really is, because um, the Christ in their mind is like a guy that comes in a sleigh with a big white beard, giving presents out. Um, it's Antichrist. It's not. It's not the true Christ. Um, when, you know, when Jesus returns, yes, he will. He will reward his saints. You know, Jesus says, "My reward is with me." That's an encouragement to the, the children of God, to the saints. It's not going to give you like parcels to open under a tree you know these are going to be real viable spiritual and physical perhaps gifts you know at, at Jesus second coming but you know unless your hope is in Christ and you're not falling for this false gospel antichrist mass then you know many of us have gone over this um Many people could still get very offended by this in churches, um, pastors and uh, members alike, alike. They all get very, very offended by it. Why? Uh, Jesus said, those who are offended in me, I will be offended at you at my second coming. It's better for them who have uh, never heard my words or teachings rather than heard them and not do them. Jesus said, I have come to fulfill the law and the prophets, not to destroy it. That's one of his sayings. So you've heard that saying now? I'm sure you've read it a dozen times in the Word of God. So why do you reverse psychologize that and turn it around and make it mean something else and put Christmas trees up and um, reindeer and Easter bunnies at, uh, you know, Ishtar time, Easter, and the pe these people will not be told, and I think that most of them will be revealed as tears. It's just just that simple. Um, so, you know, if the church will not take a telling of what the truth is, if they will not learn, then they'll just, I think, they'll just be classified as a tear by the Lord at his second coming. God bless you. Um, many church groups on a Sunday go to restaurants and they come to places like this and hang out, um, listen to the music. And I was listening to some songs earlier and they were really, they were actually speaking to me about my life. And God used that, okay. But it's not exactly a Christian environment. Um, you know, that... It used to be in some Baptist churches and Christian churches they weren't even allowed to go to cinemas, that they had to change their outdoor clothes before they got into the sanctuary and all that stuff. Maybe some churches in America still like that. Um, but as followers of the Jewish Messiah, I think we should teach the the Jewish name or the Hebrew name of, of the Messiah, you know. I, I just think it's time for that. It has, it's always been time for that, to be honest with you, but as, as there were approaches of Yeshua's second coming, um, I really think we should uh, preach the name of Yeshua, pray in the name of Yeshua. You know, all these tears and false preachers on the internet that um, lie and say that the name of Jesus is a Hebrew word. When there's no giant Hebrew, there was no giant English until 400 
odd years ago. And in the 1611 King James Bible, it was spelled I-E-S-U-S. Kelsus, Jesus, Isis. So the word Zeus is in many old uh, King James Bibles. That's the that's the bad point I would say about the, the very old translations is that they still had these names in and they were more plain, that they were plain with the names of the Messiah and John the Baptist and also Elijah, Elias, my God is Zeus, I don't, I think not, Elijah, it means my God is Yah. So you got to be aware that, um, yeah, there was fraternities and masons who were involved. Now, they weren't responsible for translating the King James Bible. That was King James and his translators, but there was a little leaving in that lump, you could say, and it wasn't um, put into print as such, allowed to be put into print until certain of these names were changed. I mean, we just got to admit that. Now, I'm, a, I'm a King James Bible man. I, I use the KJ3, and you can also get a Hebrew names King James Bible. You know, I'm not stupid. I'm not a little boy. You know, I've been a born again Christian for 25 years. I've seen miracles. I've seen people being healed miraculously. I've seen God's hand move in judgment miraculously. I've seen many things as a, as a believer. Um, so, the whole reason that Jesus came is to make us rich in his kingdom, not make us billionaires or millionaires in this world you know, if it's God's will for you to do well maybe you can open a few orphanages great but where are you going to get the personnel where are you going to get right people that are right with God serving God to actually do these jobs you can have all the money in the world but unless you've got the right people to work with then the money doesn't mean anything you must have the right people in God it's got to be done his way it's got to be done God's way and not through these fake missionaries you know, I was at OM, stayed there in Moldova for a little while. Um, I could have stayed on. God made it possible for me to stay on if I'd wanted. But there was two Masons who basically wanted me to go and get an apartment. That's where they, sit. they came down. I was sitting in the kitchen. And they just came down. These are believers in Christ. These are meant to be missionaries. I said, uh, oh, why don't you find an apartment for yourself? And I was like just sat, you know, and then I, I found out where the guy's office was, I went up, and um, there was a picture of pyramids on the wall, him and his little friend, and I said, uh, I just told him straight, you know, I said, uh, you're on the payroll, aren't you? He said, oh no, I raised my own money, I'm a missionary, I said, what's your job? And he said, uh, I can't tell you that, why should I tell you, he said, I said, you're on the payroll, aren't you? So it went on like that. And then what they did, they changed the actual uh, code on the door so I couldn't get in, but someone told me early. And I could have stayed on if I'd wanted, but I decided to go down, um, as you saw, and help the little village church, which, which was a great blessing. I enjoyed that. But, um, again, I think, I think there's a few individuals in that place that needed deliverance, but they, sadly was time for me to move on. I would have given them deliverance, but I don't think they were really up for it. Um, but you can certainly pray for these individuals, pray for Tamara. Um, certainly some very, very gifted and believers there, down there in the Moldova. So let's bless the name of Yeshua. Let's start teaching the name of Yeshua. If you don't like what I'm teaching on this channel, go to another channel. You know, I'm a traveling preacher. I preach the word of God to the Jew first and then the Gentile. I don't preach Santa Claus. I don't preach uh, Jesus, Jesus, or Hailsus, or Isis. I don't preach these names. I preach the name of Yeshua. Thank you.